Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. If you'd like to do a 10 minute lightning talk, please email me at joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Ramon. He will be talking about Ansible Project Deploy. Uh, please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Ramon some feedback. Ramon, take it away. Uh, thank you, Joe, and hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to tell you a little something about um, deploying your project with Ansible. Um, First, a little introduction. Uh, my name is Ramon de la Fuente. Uh, I'm the one on the left with the unpronounceable uh, Twitter handle. Um, I own a company called Future 500 based in the Netherlands, and I wrote this role together with Jasper Brouwer. Um, the problem we tried to solve with this role is that we want to deploy with the press of a button, uh, fully automated, um, and we want to be able to maintain that uh, deploy procedure uh, without a lot of overhead and we want new team members to be able to understand the deploy procedure and be able to uh, change it as soon as possible um, and obviously we want to reuse that between projects uh, so first before we go into the role uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what we consider a deploy people who use Capistrano will recognize this um, the directory structure we use is that you have on the remote server, you'll have uh, a releases folder. And in the releases folder, there is a timestamped folder with a release in each folder. Um, there's also a shared folder. And in that folder, you will uh, keep anything that you want to share between releases, uh, for example, uploaded files by users and session files. Uh, you'll also see a source uh, folder. And that contains the latest source code of, of your project. And uh, the reason that's there is to uh, prevent you from uh, having to upload the entire uh, source code every time you do a release. Uh, also of interest is the current. It's just a symlink that points to the later, latest release. Um, so step one, you update your code base on the remote server and you place the correct configuration files uh, for the environment that you are deploying. And step two is installing your dependencies, uh, usually through a dependency manager like Composer. And step three is uh, preserving your shared resources. Uh, these are just basically symlinks from your release into the shared folder. And step four is perform some build tasks. Um, this could be, for example, uh, compiling your less or SAS uh, into CSS or minifying your JS files. And step five is finalize and basically just uh, changing the symlink from the current uh, from the previous release to the to the current release so there's a role that does all that for you uh, in ansible it lives in ansible galaxy and i won't go into galaxy uh, right now but the galaxy is uh, a place where you can uh, share roles with others and there's a command line tool to easily install those so i'll walk you through the role um, there's a lot of slides here with a lot of ansible uh, code. Please don't try to read them all as I go through because I'm going really fast. Uh, I've highlighted the stuff that I'm talking about and they're mostly the, the variables that uh, you can use to point this role in the right direction. So this role includes a custom module called deploy and uh, in the first task the deploy module is called and it will give you access to some facts. Uh, these facts are uh, related to the deploy you're doing right now. And as you can see, there's uh, uh, the most important one here is the new release. Because when you do a deploy, you won't know the actual timestamp. And here I'll add some example values. You'll see that the timestamp is placed into the new release fact. And then the bottom line, you can see how to use that uh, later on. Um, so still in step one, you're going to update your code base and you have uh, two options to update your code base. Uh, one is the synchronize method and the other is uh, using Git. Uh, you can steer the, the role in the right direction by setting the project deploy strategy variable to either synchronize or Git. Um, synchronize is an rsync from your local machine to the remote and Git would be directly from a repository. If you use Git, uh, you're also going to have to add a project version and the project version is just a Git reference, like a tag or a, a branch name. You have, uh, once the role starts, it will place a file inside your code base that's called uh, build unfinished by default. And that will live inside, that, uh, uh, inside your, your code base until the end of the deploy role. And it signifies an unfinished build. 
Um, if you run a second deploy, any folder that contains that build file will be deleted because it's considered failed. So we're still in step one. The code base is updated, but now we have to place the right configuration files for the environment. Uh, Ansible knows of copy and templates, uh, basic Ansible stuff here. Um, the role provides two lists that you can use to um, uh, to instruct the, the role to either copy or uh, uh, use the template module to get these files on a remote location. So when you get here, you have the dependency, uh, installing dependencies. Um, the, the role has support for three different dependency managers, Composer, NPM, and Bower. And because the role doesn't assume to know which one you use, uh, these variables are by default set to false. If you set project has composer to true, for example, or yes, um, it, the composer install command will run. And uh, although there's a same default, you can al um, alter the command that's being used by replacing this variable, the project command for composer install. There's the shared resources in step three. These are the symlinks to your shared folder. And this is basically just a list of symlinks that uh, you want to do, and the role will create those for you. So build steps, uh, I gave two examples before. Um, project post build commands is also a list, and I'll give you an example here. Uh, these are three build commands that, um, if, if you're a Symfony user, you will recognize these. And if you want to run, a, a, if, if you do a deploy and use this, these build commands, in step four, these three commands will run. Step five is finalize. And in the finalize, the unfinished file name, uh, the unfinished file will be deleted and the symlink will be replaced, which means that the, the deploy was successful. If you have your own tasks that you want to run after step four, but you don't want to finalize yet, you can set project finalize to false, which means that uh, this role um, will not be finished and this deploy will not be finished. And you'll have the option to do stuff for yourself. For example, a, a database schema update. So I made it this far. I hope you have as well. Um, those were a lot of slides, but it's not that complicated. Uh, there's only 75 lines to this uh, role, and there's 18,024 variables. So anyone can really understand this with minimal effort. And I'll show you an, ex show you an example playbook um, from our user group, Sweet Lake PHP, which is a Symphony 2 project. So we start off by uh, defining a playbook. Um, and the, because this role is steered by variables, the var section is the mo most important one. Project root, this is, a, uh, this is the one you have to uh, provide. This is the root on the remote server. Uh, we use git, so we also have to provide the git repository. We add project environment. Um, for Symfony, it's necessary to provide this environment variable and uh, this environment variable will be added to any uh, build command later on, so uh, Symfony will know for which environment to build. Project shared children, these are the symlinks to the uh, shared folder, and here you'll see two symlinks being made. App sessions will be symlinked to uh, shared sessions, and the same goes for uploads. There's some project templates. Um, there's just one in this case, actually, and you see it's a source and destination. So this template will go from local to remote and any variables inside will be uh, replaced by Ansible. We use Composer, so we set project has Composer to yes. This will, this will run a Composer install. And after that, we have the post build commands and you'll see uh, something similar to the example I showed before. A cache clear, assets install, static dump. So that's it. All the variables are set. And now we tell Ansible that there's just one role to run, the deploy role. And as a little bonus, um, the role has the capability to clean up um, any old releases that you have after a successful deploy. Uh, so if you add this post task, uh, you tell the deploy module to run with a status clean and your disk won't clutter up. Um, well, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you to Nomad for having me. Um, this is the GitHub. A repository for the actual project. And as I said before, you can find the role on Ansible Galaxy. And I would love some feedback on joined in. Thank you.
Uh, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you would like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me at joe at nomadphp.com. Uh, make sure you visit Joined In and leave Ramon some feedback. Ramon, thanks, thanks a lot for doing the talk.